Let's take a look here at a Caesar cipher, which is a simple cipher that shifts values uh, by some numerical constant, for example, two, three different letters in the alphabet over. And in this uh, scenario here, we can see this encrypt function, which does all of the heavy lifting, and then the decrypt, which turns it out the other way. Now, in terms of what I'm going to do in this particular example is to build out a comment that allows me to show how you can actually use this in a more sophisticated way. So a lot of times when you're building a utility, a command line tool is one of the best possible ways to play with it, iterate through the different concepts. So in this uh, particular example here, we can see here that I have cargo run and I put in dash s message off to the bunker, every person for themselves. And then I can encrypt it and then shift it by some numerical constant. And to decrypt it, I would actually just do the opposite uh, scenario here, which is do your cargo run dash dash message, put in the encrypted message, and then decrypt it and then shift it. So this is a great way to try a different idea out, especially things like encryption ciphers. Chameleon tool is an amazing uh, you know, utility to actually leverage how to get the most out of the code you wrote. So in this particular example here, I just import the decrypt and encrypt. Next step, I use the clap parser here to do all the heavy lifting. And this example here, I say CLI tool to encrypt and decrypt messages. And this is mostly boilerplate code, uh, but I do have an encrypt message. I have a decrypt message. And I also have uh, the message itself, right? So those are really the, the the main items. And then the shift is really important as well. I do a default value of three, but obviously you're gonna need to shift and, and uh, also unshift whenever you're decrypting or, or unencrypting a message. Finally, to pull it all together, pretty straightforward. You just pull in those arguments uh, by using let args, and then uh, you just iterate through. So you say, if encryption is set, do this, otherwise do this, and you you navigate through what's happening. So let's go ahead and run this. So let's duck in cargo run. And now if we look and we say message, we can say, for example, hello, and just try something really simple. And it says, uh oh, we need to actually um, change how we're doing things. Now, notice that it didn't work because I didn't uh, put in the first uh, double hyphen here. So this is an easy make mistake to make because when you're using it from a uh, non-binary release, you're you're using the chameleon tool from essentially the the project. You're going to have to pass in those. Uh, messages inside. And that's what the double hyphen does. So if we run it again, there we go. Please specify either encrypt or decrypt. Okay, great. So now I can start to play with this and I can just say, I want to do the binary toggle here of, um, of encrypt. So there we go. We see that it encrypted with a shift of three. Now, if I wanted to change the shift to, for example, one, there's a shift of one. And we can also see, obviously, H, the next letter is I. E, the next letter is F, right? So you can intuitively kind of figure that out. And then to uh, decrypt it, we can actually go through here and uh, do a decrypt, decrypt, and then put in the message, which is this message. and then go to the end. I did a control E to get me to the very end again, and now I can actually decrypt it. So in my opinion, building uh, little tools to help you out to do things is one of the advantages of Rust. I would say it has a strong advantage over scripting languages because of the fact that it has binary-based deployment and that it's very, very safe. So I would say in many ways, a Rust-based chameleon tool has a superior experience to other scripting languages because that binary, once it's built, you can just give it to somebody and then they can actually run through the tool. Here we have a Caesar cipher, which is one of the simplest encryption techniques that 
you can use because it only shifts the alphabet letters by a set number to encode a message. So in this particular scenario, what I've done is I've built this all into a tool that allows you to not only create the cipher and encrypt the cipher, but also to use statistical analysis to detect what the cipher probably is. So if you can figure out what the shift most likely is, and you can come up with, let's say, some kind of a metric that looks at the highest probability for what the shift is, then you could actually de detect what the message is. And you can even think of this as a technique you could use if it was a, a big data problem, for example, and a lot of the data was uh, using this Caesar cipher before you tried every single approach with a brute force, you could actually sample it like I'm doing in this particular example. So if we take a look at this, we can see here that there's a shift here of 10 in this particular example. And I uh, can go through and try to guess uh, exactly what's happening and it'll give me different scores. So in this one, it'll say shift zero, shift one, shift, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see here that there's two that are are pretty close here. Uh, and there's another one, shift 11. And if we keep going down though, even further, shift 16 has got a, a tremendous score, which is a score of 40. So most likely uh, based on this statistical guess of the frequency of the letters, that shift 16 is going to be the one that's used. And if we go back up here, um, you can see here that you can actually try that out. So. Uh, here, we're going to uh, tie it all together. First, I use Cumuline Tool uh, Library, which is the parser. Then I go through and I print the analysis, and then I pull together different items, like the message, right, is a key component, the stats here, statistical information about the message, and then guessing the shift, and then you, at the very end here, pull this all together into some code. Now, if we look at the lib, this is where a lot of the magic happens here is that I have a hash map and I store the uh, initial frequencies of letters. So if you look at 80% of the letters in English, they're going to have, uh, you know, this particular makeup. So E would be 12.7, T would be 9.1, A would be 8.2, et cetera, et cetera. And then if we go down here, we could actually come up with a statistical analysis. So we could look through what's going on in the code and uh, essentially map out the the probabilities. And then finally, we could print out the, the statistical analysis inside. And that's what this function actually does. Finally, uh, if we want to decrypt it, we would just then pass it in to this particular uh, function here. So really, that's the, 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 the genesis of everything that's happening. And then if we want to guess the, the shift here, what we would do is we would use a statistical analysis to determine the likely shift. And then uh, we would actually return back what most likely is the decrypted uh, message because you would pick the highest score. So here we you can see how all that works. And then we return back a guess shift. So this is like a secret decoder ring uh, that uh, is going to do its best to guess what's happening. So in order to use it, all I need to do here is um, go ahead and do cargo run. And then if I do dash dash and then dash dash help, I can get some feedback of exactly what's happening. Uh, when we first start off here, it's going to say, okay, CLI tool to reverse engineer a Caesar uh, cipher. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and do a message. And we can say, you know, for example, um, the message would, would be hello. And then we would put in, um, in this particular uh, example here, uh, what some kind of statistic, if you wanted to, we could do, you know, dash stats. And it would say, you know, the frequency. Now, because I want to work on something that's already uh, encrypted, let's go ahead and uh, go back to, you know, here and let's figure out a message like this. And let's just put this message in into our, our tool. So we can actually even put it all together, make it easier and and go to uh, a guess and we can see here that it's going to run through the tool and it's going to look through every one of the different scores that's generated and it found that the highest score is 16 so it's going to try to uh, do 16 
and it's going to say decrypt a, a message, which is off to the bunker, every person for themselves. So really, this is a great way to try out different ideas with ciphers, encryption, is to put it into command line tool. And also, we know that one of the weaknesses of a cipher is the fact that it's vulnerable to this uh, frequency attack, right? So we know that uh, if you analyze the letters in a cipher for frequency, that one of the giveaways is th that the letter E is used 12% of the time, 12.7% of the time. So you know that you can start to do these guesses and then actually calculate what the score is. And then that's really the way to essentially decode the message using statistics. So kind of a fun exercise to play around with. And it was only possible by the elegance of the Rush language.